بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد جزاكم الله خير and I'm really delighted that we're in the masjid Alhamdulillah I know that people are like you may be watching in YouTube but it's something else to be in the masjid because we know from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is something special about being here that whenever people gather in a masjid to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know the hadith. Angels come and they surround them. And not only that, we know that this is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sakina, state of serenity comes down. You know, serenity and rahmah and compassion. It happens in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot come to the house of Allah because Allah is so generous. You cannot visit that house and go empty-handed. And we know the reward that when people attend a session like any session of dhikr, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if you were coming not to listen but you just sat in the back every everyone in the gathering when the when the, we when we finish and you're done and alhamdulillah you go home all your sins are forgiven and that's sufficient sufficient wallahi to be in a masjid in a gathering of of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala طيب uh, I'll start uh, yani, uh, the, our discussion today with a, a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, something that happened and he taught us a very interesting concept. And uh, he was in the city of Medina and he sent Abu Ubaidah to uh, a district to gather the, the money from people, the money of zakah and charity, you know, so that he collects that. Alhamdulillah, Abu Ubaidah goes there and uh, people were, alhamdulillah, rich, you know, having abundance and they were generous. So not only they give their zakah money, they give a lot of charity, you know, a lot of sadaqah, extra, if you will. So Abu Ubaidah returned to Medina at the time where there was scarcity, right? And people heard, you know, he came back with gold and silver and this and that and sheep and camel and apparently a lot of things, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, just pile it in the masjid, you just leave it there. And everybody heard about it. Next day, Salat al-Fajr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walks in the masjid, doesn't even look. You, you would think you would be curious, what did he get, what? No, 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 just walks in as if nothing exists. Doesn't even look at it. Heads to the, the musalla, prays Fajr, and of course the masjid is full. The masjid is packed. Everybody from the outskirts of Medina heard about what happened. Lots of money, lots of gold, lots of silver. We're in need, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is very generous. So uh, Salat al-Fajr, the masjid is like, mashallah, like Eid Salah, you know, like just everybody's there. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, finishes Salat al-Fajr, of course, does what? Sits to do his dhikr. Long dhikr, mashallah. You know, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his adhkar does all his adhkar with focus. And, and then he turns around and guess what? Nobody left. Everybody's sitting there. Everybody's sitting there looking at him and smiling. And he understood what's going on. Right? Yeah, he knows, right? So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said what? لَعَلَّكُمْ سَمِعْتُمْ أَنَّ أَبَا عُبَيْدَ عَادَ بِشَيْءٍ Perhaps you've heard that Abu Ubaidah returned with something. Everybody smiles, looks down, يعني, yeah, kind of, right? And they're expecting, yeah, he's generous. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says the following. He says, أَبْشِرُ Have glad tidings. Yes, there is money, there is enough for everybody. He's generous, you're going to get your share. Don't worry about that. But then he uses this opportunity to teach a very interesting concept. He says the following, Abshiru, khalas, you're going to get what you want. However, Wallahi, laysa al-faqr akhafu alaykum. It is not scarcity, it is not lack, it is not poverty that I am afraid on you from. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, see, he cares about his ummah. So he's saying what? It seems that the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the state of scarcity, poverty, lack, nobody wants it. We ask Allah for abundance. But it seems we do better in that state. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what? لَيْسَ الْفَخْرُ أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ It is not poverty that I fear on you. وَلَكِنْ أَخَافُ أَن تُفْتَحَ عَلَيْكُمْ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا فُتِحَتْ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ فَتَتَنَافَسُوهَا كَمَا تَنَافَسُوهَا فَتُهْلِكُكُمْ كَمَا أَهْلَكَتْكُمْ he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, but what I'm really afraid on you from, like a compassionate father or mother telling his kid, you know, going to the university, son, please, when you go there, the thing I'm most afraid on, on you from there is X and Y and Z. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying what, the thing that really scares me regarding my ummah 
is not scarcity. It's not poverty. It's the opposite. What I'm afraid on you is that the life of this world will open its doors onto you. And tuftah alaykum dunya. You know what tuftah means? Do you understand what? When gates are closed and now and then all of a sudden all the gates are open, meaning what you're flooded with things. Well, wealth, money, status, power, you know, technology. The, the, the beauty of this life pours onto you. You get a state of abundance of resources. And then what happens? See, it is not dunya, abundance of resources that he was scared from. He said what? Then you will compete in it. Like the people before you competed in it. And then it will destroy you like it destroyed them. So here he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, points us to one or two interesting points. Number one, it is not abundance that causes a problem. It is not money that causes the problem. It's our attitude regarding, regarding this, this money. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ni'ma al-mail al-salih fi yad al-abd al-salih. Blessed and very honorable it is and very good it is. Money, good money, a lot of money in the hands. Notice, in the hands. Of a righteous good man. Money should be in my, my hand, not in my heart. Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, and who he was, he said it. He said, I would love that the whole resources of this world is in, with me, that I own it in my hand. Notice the word, biyadi. Why? So I can feed it to the hungry people. The, so he even said, Ad dunya fil yad. مباح الدنيا في الجيب مباح الدنيا في القلب غير مباح دنيا in your hands permissible دنيا in your pocket you're saving it permissible دنيا in your heart impermissible so why the heart this container that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger a very beautiful hadith before I can continue he صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن لله في, في أرضه آنية Allah has vessels on earth. Allah created vessels. You know what? A, a, a vessel is, is created to be filled, right? So the hadith is saying, what well, there are special vessels that Allah created that is intended, He is going to fill them. And then what are those vessels? Indeed, the vessels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth is the, are the hearts of the righteous servants. And the most beloved is the one that's more gentle and transparent. So the heart, because it's intended to be filled with gifts from Allah, knowledge of Allah, ilm of Allah, uh, experiences of Allah, it is vast, it's big. If I attempt to fill the void, fill this void in my heart with worldly materialistic things, the dunya, as vast as it seems, guess what? It's not big enough to fill my heart. Because my heart... It's aspiring, its capacity to, to be filled is much bigger. It's intended to be filled with the Lord, the Rabbil Alameen. So when I start taking dunya and putting it in my heart, it's never enough. It's like drinking, drinking the seawater. You drink, you get more thirsty, you drink. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said point number one. When the, it's not the dunya, but when the dunya enters onto one, someone's heart, what happens? Something counterintuitive. He said, you start to compete in it. Wait a minute. You would think that people compete, compete more when they don't have resources, when things are scarce, when I don't own. Because I don't have, if I don't have a car, I would want a car more, right? He, sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us something about humans really interesting. He says, no. Human beings, you would think when you get a lot of money, if you have a million dollars, khalas, ya I have my house, I have my car, I'm done. He says, no. The more you have, the more you compete. People that tend to compete most are people that have more. We see it. Actors, famous people, people that are rulers of cities, ruler of countries, kings. They are the ones that, that they compete. They become more attached. Yeah, you have enough, you would think. The more you have, the more you compete. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa is warning us to what? It's not the worldly life that's the problem. It is that attitude of competition. Wait a minute, and that's my topic. It's natural for me to want to be first. It's natural for me to want to become the best imam. It's natural for me to want to become the best engineer, that my son is the best student. Is it haram to compete? 
this desire that I'm better than others, that I come first. Is he, sallallahu alayhi wa saying that's not permissible? No. Al-Munafasa is mubah. However, that's now my topic. Scholars say, first of all, there is two types of competition. Competitiveness. Competitiveness in the matters of the hereafter versus competitiveness in the matter of dunya. What do you mean? It's one thing to compete in what? Obeying Allah, memorizing the Quran, doing good, paying more charity like Abu Bakr and Umar. They competed. Right? In the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran, وَفِي ذَلِكْ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ In this, let people that want to compete, compete. Meaning what? If you want to really be competitive, be competitive in something that's worth it. Don't compete over like one dollar. It's not even worth your time. If you really want to compete, ah, yeah, I compete to get a Nobel Prize. I compete to publish a paper. I compete to get a, you know, a, a job as a dean in the university, right? All those are nothing. If you really want to compete, compete in real status. Real status is not here. It's with Allah. Compete in what? Closeness to Allah. Obeying Allah. Serving other people. Compete in Jannah. To be in the highest rank in Jannah. This is the, this is the arena of real competition. Right? So competitiveness in the matters of the hereafter versus competitiveness in worldly things. But still the question poses, Yahi, I still want I want sometimes to have what they want. I always want, I want the best car. I want to become the best doctor. I want to become the best sheikh, even for a, is that haram? The answer is the following. Well, it is mubah, permissible, but dangerous. Why? I'll give you an example that will help illustrate my point. There was this king, alhamdulillah, king, very rich, but same problem. Status, but he wants more. So he said, I want poetry that, you know, uh, poetry about me. I want somebody to write a poem about how great I am. Get me the top poets in my country. And they got him too. Those are the top people of poetry. He has status and he wants more. So, okay, guys, I'm going to give you a lot, you know, a big prize for the one of you that makes a, 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 a poem about me. And the first person starts. And, mashallah, poetry and and the king is really happy. MashaAllah, really good. That's so powerful. I love it. He looks at the other person. Show me what you have. No competition. So the second person does what? Poetry. And MashaAllah, really good. Really amazing. So the king looked at both of them. I can decide. Both poems. Yours is good. Yours is good. You're an excellent poet. You're an excellent poet. I don't know which one is better. So what should I do? Which one should I reward? So the king said the following. Okay, you know what? I'm going to be generous. I'm going to reward both of you. However, one of you ask for anything, I'm going to give it to you. But I'm going to give his brother double. See the idea? Guess what happened now? All of a sudden, no, ya akhi, you start. La, la, you're, you're better than me. You start. No, no, I can't start. You ask. No, no, you ask. No, you ask. And then the king was, nobody's asking. He said, okay, stop. You, you ask, what do you want? You'll get it, and I'm going to give your brother double. So that was like, what will I add? He's going to get double. And I said, oh, oh king, I, I know, I know. I said, yes, what do you want? He said, I want you to take out one of my eyes. Do you get it? You take one of my eyes, what happens to my friend? You take both his eyes. Ah, oh, I win. This is not about getting. This is about your brother losing. Or you focused on, what is that type of competition? This wasn't a competition to get something. You're going to lose one eye. I don't care. He loses both. I win. It's about winning. Ah, interesting. Then we learn competition has two forms, positive and negative. Positive, very interesting. You're running a race. You're trying to memorize the Quran. Right? Alhamdulillah. And I want to be, I want to be the best Quran reciter. I want to come first in the race. And I'm running, and here comes another runner, and he's faster, and he starts going ahead of me. My, my fellow uh, a student is memorizing more Quran than me, but I want to become better than him. You have one of two states. The first state is what? Exert more effort. Put more effort. Spend more hours memorizing the Quran. Go to the gym more. Run faster. Make more effort so that you win by doing what? By doing more work. Oh, he published 10 papers. Work hard, publish 20. Both of you are good. What happens if I'm lazy? 
I'm not willing to work like him. I'm not. But I still want to become number one. I, I still want to become the best sheikh. But I'm not willing to put the amount of time and effort those other sheikh are. I want to become the best doctor. But I'm not willing to study like those other people day and night. And they seem to be ahead of me. And I'm not winning. There is a second way to win the race. Which is what? Catch the person from his back. Pull him. Trip him. Right? He trips. He falls. He says, and I, I win by him losing. That is dangerous. That door of competitiveness is about what? Not I get. I get by you losing. I become the best by you becoming worse. That is a door of the disease of envy. Al-Hasad. Now, when we speak about hasad, envy, most of us here would say, I don't have that, you know, that's something. It's very subtle. Envy has many doors. One of them is competitiveness, which we'll speak about. So what is the definition of envy? Very simple. Allah is generous. Allah gives. He's al Karim, most generous. He's al Wahhab, the giver of gifts. He's the most forgiving. So he gives people whether they deserve it or not, whether I like it or not. He will give people that deserve, and he will give people that do not deserve. How do I react to those names of Allah? When Allah gives, when Allah gives me, my duty is to do what? Be grateful. Acknowledge it and say, ah, Rabbi, like alhamd. If I do that, that's shukr, that's gratitude, good for you. The way I react to Allah's gifts to me is gratitude. How do I react to Allah's gifts to other people? What if Allah gave you, but not me? He gave you more beauty than me. He gave you more wealth than me. He gave you more IQ than me. He gave you the love of people more than me. How do I react then? Do I hate it? Or do I accept it? Hasad, the definition of it is what? Is to hate, to see a blessing of Allah on other people and wanting it to be gone. I want you to lose it. I hate that you have it and I don't. So instead of saying, Ya Rabbi, like you give him, give me. You're most generous. You give me, you give him, you're, you're giving so many people. Me too. No, no, no. Ya Rabbi, why did you give him? I deserve better. I know more. Why are you honoring him, not me? Isn't that what Shaitan did? Why are you honoring Adam? He still didn't do anything. I am better than him. It is not fair. See that? I'm objecting on Allah. As if I'm saying what? Do not give him, do not give her. The way you're distributing your bounties, I do not like. Give me, not them. And Allah's generous. And Allah's kareem. Yeah, he might be doing a lot of sins, but Allah's al-ghafoor al-rahim. Allah knows what you do not know, and Allah will still give him. And therefore, the danger of hasad is I'm opposing Allah's lordship. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu said what? Al-hasad wal-iman. لا يجتمعان في جوف العبد. Envy and faith cannot coexist together in the heart of a believing servant. Envy etches out faith. In another narration, الحسد يأكل الحسنات كما تأكل النار الحطب. Envy will eat out, will burn your good deeds, burn. Like fire burns wood. Very destructive. Because with envy, it's about what? Remember what we said? Envy is like, uh, there is nothing wrong in me wanting to be a good person. It, by the way, it happens with even shiyukh. It happens with ulama, scholars. You go study in Al-Azhar, you have a PhD, you come here, and then all of a sudden here comes this no man, no one, didn't study, gives a khutbah, and then you hear everybody is happy with him and not you. Yahi, why? Why him? He does not have the same credentials. I work 10 years, and I give khutbah, nobody attends. Nobody follows my, my Facebook page. Everybody's following him. Why him? It's, he didn't study like me. He doesn't know what I know. And then you become what? I want what he wants. I want what he have. Type, okay, work more. لا. I will speak ill against him. People have to know he's a mubtada'. He's this. He has this mistake. You know. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. The Quran says this envy, when it's in the heart, and the heart has this darkness like Iblis, it causes us to say, do, speak, 
act in a way that is hurtful to others. Because I hate to see others having good things. Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, this great companion, which was also a very shrewd politician, very capable, very intelligent. He said something really interesting. He said, Kull nas akhdar, akhdar ala ridha. Everybody I can manage to satisfy. I'll find a way, except al hasid, except an envious person. He is not going to be satisfied until I lose everything I have. That's impossible. When, I'm an, when I have envy, I'm going to suffer in this life. You know why? Because Allah is going to continue to give. He's generous. And He's going to continue to give people that do not deserve. He knows more than me. He's forgiving. And you, you, me objecting is objecting against what? I'm objecting against the Lordship of Allah. That's why the other hadith, very scary. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Zakariya alayhi salam, another prophet said that Allah himself said, Al-Hasid, adun ni'mati, mutasakhit liqadai, ghayri radin bi qismati. An envious person is an enemy, is declaring animosity towards my, my blessings, my generosity. He does not, what, what is he upset, what is he fighting? He's fighting my gifts. Mutasakhit liqadai. He's not pleased with, the, with my decrees, what I decide to give people. غَيْرِ رَادٍ Not satisfied with how I divide things among my servants. I chose that person to be more stronger, that person more beautiful, that person more intelligent. يَا no, 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 no. It should have been me, not him. They do not give him this. I'm objecting on the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very dangerous. Now many of us would say, Alhamdulillah, uh, May Allah protect all of us. Envy is not my thing. We have to also understand one thing about envy. Envy has, has, by the way, envy has many doors. We speak about them. But the door I'm speaking about, one of the doors of envy is what? Hubb dunya When I love something in this world and I'm competing in it. Now competing in something I love is mubah. Envy is haram. So what does that mean? I'll give you an example. A sheikh, if you go to a sheikh and tell him, Ya sheikh, we have a new person came to town. He's a doctor. He's an amazing doctor. He's the best doctor ever. I went to him, mashallah, very kind, very knowledgeable. He knows everything. He studied in Harvard. He's a very capable doctor, and he's a very kind person. The sheikh is not going to envy a doctor. Why? He's a sheikh, and he's a doctor. Who would you think a sheikh would envy? Another what? Sheikh. What's your area? What is important for you? What, what are you competing in? See, that area, when somebody else, if you tell that sheikh, if I go, can you imagine if I go to the sheikh, I don't know, uh, in Mission Viejo, for example. Yeah, sheikh, today I want to I, I will see, mashallah, Imam Uthman gave a khutbah. This is the best khutbah ever. Those are the shiuch men. Everybody was crying in the masjid. This is the best khutbah I ever heard in my life. He is such a great person. What have I done? What do you think? If he's a good sheikh, he says, he'll say what? MashaAllah, Ya Rabbi, like you gave him, give me. But if I start, sometimes, the reason I'm saying this, not only do I need to protect my heart from envy, I need to protect the heart of my community from envy. Be careful how you speak. Be careful. Praise people. And if you want to praise a person in front of another person, be careful. Why? I don't want shaitan to use this against that person. So let's say in the same example, how should I speak to the sheikh? I go to him and say, Ya yeah, sheikh, mashallah, jazakumullah khair. Ya akhi, you, you shaykh are doing such a wonderful job. Mashallah, yourself and sheikh so and so and sheikh, you are doing such a wonderful job here. We're transforming people. Just the other day, I was in this masjid and your friend gave a wonderful khutbah. May Allah bless you and bless him. You guys are so... Then he would feel what? Okay. Same thing with worldly matters. Be careful. When you speak to people, don't plant the seeds of envy in them. Always praise people for what they are. Be careful from overly praising others. The community we live in, the competitiveness in social media, what are we doing to each other? You think about it. Alhamdulillah, you had a good day. You had a wonderful... You're posting it in front of everybody. And everybody looks at it and see all the likes coming to you. And then he wants to be like you. Then he starts having to... You know, when, when I traveled to Morocco, something very interesting about Muslims, right? Very interesting. The houses in Morocco, the old 
old city versus the houses in the United States. The houses in the United States, you have the front yard, the car is parked there, the house looks beautiful, right? Alhamdulillah, good, nothing wrong. In Morocco, it's different. You would walk and you find like a, it's a wall. Nothing fancy, doesn't even look nice. And I still remember a place like that, somebody invited us to our, his house and we're walking in town. There is walls and then here's the door and I was like, ah, it's a poor person, it looks like, right? The moment you step inside that door, yeah, the opposite mentality. The outside doesn't look that great. You put your step inside a garden with fountains, with decorations. But why should I show everybody that? Why should I show people that don't have this? You know something interesting? In books of fiqh, I was, I was just discussing this with Sheikh Atuf the other day. The condition, uh, you know, when, when you want to witness a marital contract, you know, a shahid, you know, when, when you're a witness in Islam, there are conditions. To, to, to become a person that's eligible to, to witness in Islam, Islamic jurisprudence, you have to be just, you have to be sane, right? Many, but one of the conditions, they say the following. You have to have uh, yani good character. So what are some things that are considered bad character? You'll be surprised. Eating in public in the marketplace. You do that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Your, your shahada is not accepted. Why? What did I do wrong? I'm just eating. Yeah. There are people around that cannot afford what you're eating. How, how do you do that? You're going and eating a most delicious food in public, and there are people. Did, did you take care of them? That's not muru'a, ya akhi. How do you think they're going to feel? See, you, what you're doing is halal, mubah, nothing wrong. But what the, they will desire it and not be able to get it, and shaitan will play on them. Ya akhi, protect them. Do you have to do that in front of them? You see the idea? Of course, our culture here is different. I'm not telling you don't eat in public. Everybody eats in public, right? But the idea, right? So hasad is in what, in what I care about. Therefore, you find it in very interesting things. For example, like the story of Yusuf salam, and it shows us one door of envy, very subtle. What was the story about? It starts with what? This Yusuf salam, good young boy, seeing a dream, telling it to his father, and his father warning him, be careful, don't tell your brothers that. See, don't tell your brothers that. Don't tell your brother that. Be careful from that door. And nevertheless, the brothers say what? According to the Quran, What is this? It's not fair. Yusuf and his brother, our father loves them, loves them more than us. Why? We, we, and we are strong and good people too, yet our father seems to love him more than me. What are they competing in here? It's not, they're competing in what? They're the love of their father. There's nothing wrong there, right? I want my father to love me. And that, why does he love? And, and according to them, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical. He favors him over us. Why? Why is he better than me? I don't see it. Up till here, it's still, what does the next verse say? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to try to work harder? Are you going to ask your father? Are you going to get some of the traits of Yusuf so that, so that your father, like you become better than him? No, no, no. اقتلوا يوسف أو ترحوا وأرضا يأخلوا لكم وجه أبيكم Kill Yusuf. Get rid of the competition. Or throw him away in the land. By getting rid of him, then the heart of your father will be free for you. And then you can repent after that and become righteous. Subhanallah, like very interesting. And the disease here is what? A ta'ajjub. What is a ta'ajjub? In many cases, you see, I don't understand. I went to the university. I studied. I got a master's. Spent seven years. And then I graduated. And I make 70K. Here comes a high, stud high, high school student. Works in solar panels. And he's making every month 50K. What is this? Yeah, what is this? It's not fair. Why is he getting this and I'm not? And I worked harder than him. I'm an engineer. I, I designed the solar panels that he sells. I designed the wireless chips in your phones, right? You know, we sell one of our chips for 50 cents. Do you understand? 50 cents. You spent two years. <laughs> 50 cents. What are you doing? Was it worth it? You know, Alhamdulillah, we, Allah is generous. We get paid well and everything. But sometimes you look at it and 
all this 50 cents. And one guy writes one line of code, makes a software, and he sells it for 10 million and he's done. What? I spent two years to design one, and he spends one month, and he makes a, one of those apps a game, and people buy it, and he's, he's a millionaire, and, and he doesn't know what I know. Why, ya Rabbi, al tajub I'm amazed that this is not fair. Why does he? It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It's unjust. That's the problem. That's what the brothers of Yusuf said. It doesn't make sense. We're, we're all children of the same father. We're all good. Why him better than us? Why is Allah favoring him more than us? The answer came where? At the end of the story. We were shown why Yusuf indeed is better than them. They do what they do. They throw him in the well. And Yusuf encounters so many tribulations. And yet the way he was, the way what appeared from him, steadfastness, iffa, generosity, kindness, you know, Patience, beautiful attributes. And then towards the end, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now wants, wanting to show them why he's better than you, things happen and they go, and he, Yusuf, is the minister of Egypt, and they don't know who he is, and things turn out, they go for him, seeking help. And things happen, and at the end, they realize who he is. إِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ Yusuf. You are Yusuf. You the minister of after what we did and what does he he forgives all of them I pardon all of you and you know what they said at that point now we see by Allah indeed Allah favored you you are better than us that is why our father loved you more that is why Allah gave you and not us I I see it now the person I'm objecting on, why did he get $10 million and I didn't? Yeah, he perhaps he has a mother that's in need. Perhaps he has a calamity. You don't know. Perhaps he needs a lot of wealth because he's going to spend it to build a masjid and that will be his ticket to Jannah. You do not know. You don't know what's happening in his life. Why Allah decided to give him, be patient and you will see it's for a wisdom. But when I make myself in Allah's seat, astaghfirullah, and I decide what's good and what's bad, and, and how it should be, I will suffer. Envy does not only, it is it's dumb, because in one way, you can envy a person. Allah is going to continue to give him. So your envy is not going to hurt him, but it's going to hurt me. And look, subhanallah, I become like Iblis. I'm, it's the, look what happened. Iblis made me like him. The doors of envy, brothers and sisters, are many. One door is the worst, is the, the shaitani envy. Why am I saying this is the worst? Look, somebody has something and I want it. There is two states. I want it, but I don't want you to lose it. You memorize the Quran, I want to memorize the Quran too. But I don't want you to lose your Quran, I just want to be like you. This is called ghibta. Ghibta meaning this is good, positive competition. That's good, that's actually healthy. If I want what you have without you losing it, all what I have to say, Ya Rabbi, like you gave him, give me. But the second state is what? I need to have what you have, and the only way I get it is you losing it. So I want you to lose it, so I have it. I want to be, uh, I want to be the golden, you know, I have to want to win the golden medal. You have to lose, so I get it. But you know what's the worst state of envy? I want you to lose, even if I don't get it. I just don't want you to have it. Shaitan is this way. What is he getting by putting all the children of Adam if he can into hellfire? Does it save him? Does he get anything? No. But it's about what you lose. That type of envy comes from what? Hatred, rancor, arrogance. That's most deadly. The second type comes from what? Which is we're speaking about competitiveness. dunya, The love of worldly things. It is the worldly things, it's the life of this world that is so narrow that causes this to happen to the children of Adam. I just want to finish with something yani, on a more positive. What do I do if I discover I have envy? What if I, what, I have to monitor, is, do I have the seeds of envy? Do, do I really, when I'm told that somebody did something, do I ever find myself cringing, I didn't want him to get that? What do I do if I discover I am? 
I don't like that he has this. I want him to lose it. Is that haram? The answer, not yet. Depending on what you do next. The, existing of the existence of that feeling is not yet haram. If I say, Ya Rabbi, I see my heart, I don't like it. Ya Rabbi, please help me purify my heart from envy. Yeah, and I seek Allah's help with it, that's good. How do I uproot envy? If I found it in my heart, what's the cure? There is a cure to kind of deal with it if, it, if it's there, and the cure to uproot it together. So if I found envy, what, how can I regulate it, if you will? What do you think the cure would be? According to Imam al-Ghazali, every spiritual disease, the cure is in two things, ilm and amal. Ilm, learn about it. Learn about its dangers. Learn about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about it. This is, get the knowledge of it. But what's the amal? Amal is very interesting. Opposite action. All the diseases of the heart. And this is the concept of mujahada. You want to regulate them? Do the opposite of what they want you to do. What does that mean? Envy tells me to do what? So I heard about an engineer or a doctor that mashallah came in town and he's really good. And he's taking, you know, patients and I really hate that. And I want him to lose. I want him to leave. May Allah let him leave. May something happen to him and you know he stopped practicing. That's what I want because I want to be the best doctor in town. What do I do then? What does envy tell me to do? Speak bad about him. Right? What should I do now? Oh, she looks, the way she looks, sister, mashallah. She looks so beautiful. Whenever she enters the room, I just like want to cover her. I want no, no, no men see her. No, even women see her. So what, how do you speak? Speak positively about her. Speak, do the opposite of your urge. You want to speak negatively about that, that doctor? Go and spread good news in town. We have an excellent doctor in town. That's so difficult. But that's the cure. Do the opposite of what envy does. I want to cripple his efforts. Go help him. That's the way. And that's el ethar. That's a good quality in the heart. That I favor others over myself. The complete opposite of envy. Like the Ansar favored the Muhajireen. They weren't envious of them. When the immigrants came to Medina, how, do, how they were treated? They were treated so kindly, so generously. They gave them more than what they need. And they did not find in their heart any envy over their stations. This is Abu Bakr and Umar. MashaAllah. They weren't envious of them. This is Ethar. It's a good quality of a believer. Now, there is a big difference between, and I just want you to see this, comp competitiveness in the worldly affairs and competitiveness in the hereafter. Why? And this is a very interesting point. Let's say, I don't know, I'm a scientist. Oh, I love Einstein. He's so smart, man. He discovered this theory of relativity. I love this guy. I studied his work. I know it, right? And I really love him so much. And I know his biography. And I'm going to go and work as hard as he did. I might never become an Einstein, right? I love him so much. I work so hard. You're not going to get a Nobel Prize because you didn't discover the theory of relativity. He did, you didn't. So your love to him, your hard work has what? Sorry, you came, you came last. You lost, right? So in the world, the affair, we compete. And there is what? Winning and losing. Very few. Ah, I love, uh, I don't know, Mo Salah, excellent soccer player. I'll be the same. Yeah, 10,000 people are trying. Maybe 10 will succeed. What about the rest? You see my point? The life of this world is so narrow, we can't all win. In the matters of the hereafter. Whoa, what a difference. Why? I'll tell you. It's good to compete in, in heavenly things. So when you hear, we're all trying to please Allah. And I hear, mashallah, this brother, ya akhi, in Ramadan, he came to the masjid one time, he stood, he prayed one rak'ah of witr with half of the Qur'an. How do you feel when I tell you that Uthman ibn Affan, great companion, entered the masjid one day, prayed one rak'ah with all of the Qur'an. He finished it all. How do you react? Some of us, mashallah, some of us are like, oh my God. Oh, that cannot be true. 
يا اخي تو ريسايت وان جزء ريكوايرز 30 مينتس 30 جزء 30 مينتس 15 اورز ذير از نوت انف تايم ذات كان نوت بي ترو اي هاف نيوز فور يو اتس ترو اند ات هابنز ايفن توداي والله دوز ثينجز هابن اوه ماي جاد اي فيل سو باد اباوت ات يا اخي وين يو كيب تيلينج اس اباوت دوز بيبل زين العابدين برينج 300 ركعات افري داي عثمان بن عفان برينج ذا انتاير نايت with one with, with the whole quran uh, so and so give half his wealth i feel so small i feel i would never make it i can't compete with them i can't when you tell me about this sheikh how not only he memorized the quran he memorized all the books of hadith <gasps> what he memorized al bukhari and muslim and nasa yes with all the asanid those exist oh my oh, what I, and i look to myself compared to him i will never be like him see i'm not willing to put the effort and i hate that he's this way so when you tell me those stories instead of encouraging me it causes me to be more depressed astaghfirullah now look at look at the cure for this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked this numerous times he was asked by one of the companions oh prophet of allah somebody loves people that pray but he can pray like them somebody loves the people that fast but he can fast like them some somebody loves the people that give charity but he's not as generous as them what you know what was the answer al mar'u ma'a man ahab you will be with the one he loves that means you heard today that Uthman ibn Affan prayed the, with the with the whole quran in one rak'ah if i see uh, what a wonderful human being i love this man I love him because of what Allah gave him. I love him because of what he showed. That's such a beautiful heart. It's a lovable heart. Ya Rabbi, I love Uthman ibn Affan. Guess what? On the day of judgment, you were with him. If he wins, you love him, you win too. Without the... Oh, wait a minute. So when we competed the year after, it's different. I'm competing with all of you. But see, if one of us make it, all what it takes is that we love that person. That's it. We all win. a decent competition let's all run to allah and let's all love the one that wins that way even if i was a little bit lazy you win i love you i'm with you what more do we want and what do we lose when shaitan makes us look at what what yani subhanak ya rab not only he made me hate my fellow brother a righteous person but he deprived me of getting that rank by me wishing instead of loving him now i hate him and i wish that he doesn't have not only i am hating a brother i am deprived of being with him and he is going to still be given by allah and he's still going to be winning ibn sirin said something really interesting about envy that you know puts things and this is how the root of envy is gone the root i'm speak envy has multiple roots kibr arrogance like iblis generates envy that's a dual diagnosis Com- comorbidity you know he has both arrogance on one side and envy on the other terrible but the door that seems for most of us causes envy is what hubb dunya love of this world so what's the cure ibn sirin said i don't envy anybody over worldly affair because if that person that allah gave him something of this life is going to end up in jannah why am i envying him over this if allah is going to give him jannah And if that person, Al-Ayyad is going to end up in hellfire, what do I am envying for this? If his, what's, what are we envying each other for? You see the, the root? Hubb al-dunya. What is? It's dunya. And Allah gives it to whatever. So here comes the cure. If I find my heart has this burst, somebody Allah gave him so many things that I wanted, I was not given, and she was given, and I feel my heart is cringing, Ya Rabbi, why not me and her? And I, so I go to Allah and I see the following. Ya Rabbi, you're the one. You are the one. It came from you. You decided to give her and not give me. Ya Rabbi, like you gave her in this life, increase her in this life. Give her more in this life. Give him more prosperity in this life. But don't deprive me from my share with you in the hereafter. Like you give him status in this life, give me status in your eyes on the day of judgment. like you give this brother uh, a lot of big house give me al firdaus al a'la with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam like you made people love this person here make muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his companions you and the angels 
love me. Like he's famous in this life, make me famous in the heaven. And Ya Rabbi, like you gave him in this life, give me too in this life because you're generous. And then you look to Allah and you say what? Radit, Radit, Radit. Is it a fair deal that he gets this life? And I get, if you're, going, if you're going to be happy with me, if you're going to give me all this, and this is his share, and this is my share, I accept, I accept, I accept. So I remember a rida the, the zikr. When I find this envy in my heart, I say what? Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islam dina wa bi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I remind myself of the important things. Ya Rabbi, I, I'm happy and content with what? That I'm a Muslim. I'm happy and I'm content that you are my Lord. You're the one that decides. You're the one that divides. You're the one that gives him and gives me. I'm happy with you. And I'm happy that my share is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I have you and you're happy with me, if I have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I have la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah, fair, fair, fair. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. And then you make dua for this other person. This is one way to, to what? To uproot this disease from our heart. The final thing, make it a habit. Always. To be grateful for what I have. Look at what I have and be grateful for it. And make it a habit to speak good and make dua for other people. As a training. Those that I like, those that I don't like that much. Always speak good about other people. Make it a habit to make dua for them. Make it a habit to generously tell them how great they are. Because it helps the heart. It helps clear the seeds of envy. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this clean heart. Al-qalb al-makhmum. That is free from envy. Free from the, the, these desires of more dunya. And full with the lights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlight our hearts with his light. And enable our heart to refle reflect his divine light. So that we can illuminate the world around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all a beacon of light. Not only to guide ourselves, but to guide others. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. La ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfirku wa natubu ilayk. Jazakum Allah kulli khair. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll, uh, I'll take it privately because I think it's time for salah now. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa